dazu. started with the radio removal and aftermarket radio install however prior to that process there's a couple of things you want to do so let's go ahead and get it started one of the first things you want to do is check and see if there's a CD in the radio which in our case yes there is once we got that out we're gonna go ahead and put this test this in and use our handy dandy polarity popper tool so what this does is it gives us a, a pop and that pop is gonna move all the speakers in the vehicle one direction three times and then the opposite direction one time and that's gonna indicate on the positive and negative polarity so that's gonna be track three we have your pop we have our tweeters in the dash we have mids in the doors so We have green, 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 red. Green, 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 red. And you're gonna do that at every driver in the vehicle. Good. Good. Red, 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 green would also be acceptable as long as all the speakers match. However, occasionally manufacturers may reverse the phase between the mids and the highs for better sound performance with the factory radio in which you will want to document that and install accordingly. Then make adjustments as necessary per your personal taste. Once you have all the speakers checked for polarity, you can go ahead and document the different presets that are programmed for the radio. And when you put the new radio in the car, you can go ahead and program those those presets into the new radio so you know you're doing this car for you you know it doesn't matter as much uh, but you're doing the car for somebody else it's just a nice touch for having that familiarity that they would have had on the old system but then with the the new features of the new so all that being said let's go and get started with removing the bezels and radios the best tool would be a nylon panel popper tool gonna come in I like to start at the corner you basically slide it in and just start working it out now you want to work your way around the perimeter and that's gonna ensure that if there's clips all the way around that you pop them out slowly you know if you start at one side and another you can break a clip you can break the panel itself this car in particular has two on each side of the corners nothing in the middle so we're not gonna worry about working around the perimeter we're just gonna go ahead and pop those two corners and now you can see it's free. Once we got that out, we can go ahead and remove the wire harnesses for the climb control. Generally, all the cars are the same. You have a little tab and you just squeeze it in, pull it out, squeeze it in, pull it out. I'm just gonna come in, pop it up and out. And then you got a clock here. You swing her up, same thing, push the tab in, pull it out. Once you got that out, now we can go ahead and remove our 10 millimeters. Once the radio is out, you can go ahead and remove the brackets off of the OEM radio to transfer over to the aftermarket, which you see here. At this point, we begin to mock up all of our pieces. You can see on the side of the radio, we have a series of holes, both that are punched out and some that are threaded. Some are marked T, some are marked N, T for Toyota and for Nissan. Those are going to be threaded to use the factory hardware that came on the OEM radio. You use the holes in the factory bracket, line those up with the holes that match on the radio, and then you grab your pocket, 
and repeat the same process. Line up the holes and the guide pin in the factory bracket and literally it's almost like it was made for it. Now for the mounting hardware, there were four on each side originally on the OEM radio. For this setup, we only need three. You can use a power drill or an impact like I'm using here. However, I do recommend that you use a regular screwdriver if you're not handy with the trigger so you don't strip out any of the sheet metal or the plastic in the pocket. Now you just gotta repeat the same steps on the other side and everything should align automatically. And now you have a full radio assembly ready to go into the dash. Now we do have a little gap here because this is a two piece assembly and it is really to be expected as this is a universal application. In order to address that, you start with loosening up the hardware a little bit and see if you can make any minor adjustments with the built-in flexibility or use washers to either space out or help tighten up certain things. If you're still having trouble filling in the gaps, you can utilize a foam weather stripping with an adhesive backing and stick that on the radio or maybe the pocket or wherever necessary in order to create a backing behind your gap. Now I'm not gonna trip on all that because this is an older radio and I'm gonna go ahead and replace it with an Apple CarPlay double din at a later time. With your radio assembly ready to go in the dash, you can go ahead and start preparing your wiring that needs to be run throughout the vehicle and plugged into the factory harness. Here I have the Bluetooth mic which will be run down and over to the A-pillar and up to the uppermost left-hand corner of the windshield. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and run any other wires that need to go to the back of the vehicle as well. Here, I have the RCA that's gonna go from the radio to the rear view camera. A standard reverse cam RCA is gonna come equipped with an extra red lead. Now, what that's gonna allow you to do is run a single run of wire from the front to the back of the vehicle if you need to tap into your reverse light which is one of two ways to activate the rear cam. On the radio side, it will connect to the reverse trigger wire built into the aftermarket harness. Alternatively, you can use it to send power from the front of the car back to the camera when it's activated, which is how I'm gonna do it in this application. And then I'll go ahead and grab my trigger from a fuse panel below or behind the glove box. Now you can go ahead and plug everything in accordingly, pull out your slack and go ahead and set the radio back in the dash. However, we're not gonna reassemble the dash so we can test and make sure everything works before putting the vehicle completely back together. Both the Bluetooth mic wire and the RCA come out at where the knee bolster and center console meet. And then I ran them across and affixed them to an existing wire harness with zip ties and trimmed them with a flush trim cutter to prepare them to run down the driver's side of the vehicle under all of these panels. They are all quite easy to pop off. So we're gonna grab our panel popper, and go ahead and pry up under the door sill. There's four clips under here. Same process, work your way from one side to another as to try not to break anything. Sometimes you have a clip that stays remaining, that's okay. You just use your tool, pop it right out. Try not to drop it under the seat. And you can go ahead and pop it right back into that trim. Try not to put your trim on the ground so you don't scratch it or gouge it. However, I will be changing all my trim out for black so it's not a big deal for me. Now all you gotta do is remove the kick panel trim, which is affixed with two clips and a small nut that you can just loosen up with your fingers. You can either use your panel popper or just do it by hand, pop it right out. One clip remains in the panel, the other stays stuck in the A pillar. You can use your fingers or sometimes a pliers to get those out. This one gave me a lot of trouble.
the RCA runs down the A-pillar along the length of the floor of the vehicle through the factory clips along the factory wire harness. However, like I said, the Bluetooth mic needs to run up to the top. So what we're gonna do is peel the weather strip up and you can see that gives us a nice little gap to run up. All you gotta do is remove that little 10 millimeter. You can slip the wire behind it up along the side of the dashboard behind the A-pillar, which pops right off. This is an older vehicle. The newer vehicles generally do have an airbag behind it. And that's a little more complicated to remove. But this one pops out quite easily just by hand. And you can see those clips stayed stuck in the sheet metal again. But anyway, just pull it up and out. And it's all good to go. Now you can see the wire is fixed with the factory wire harness that runs up to the rear view mirror. And again, zip tied. And I utilize those T-style clips and it just kind of took everything behind the factory harness. It's a good practice to have to make a habit of in the event you have a vehicle with airbags so if it deploys, they don't get tangled up. To reinstall, insert the bottom into the dash first, pull up the weather strip, then you can go ahead, pop the trim into the sheet metal, then finish up with reapplying the weather strip as it overlaps over the trim piece itself. As for the kick panel trim, it's the opposite. It goes over the weather strip. So I actually go ahead and try to line everything up first because I have a line of sight when the weather strip is off. And once I have an idea of where it's gonna fit, I put the weather strip back on and go ahead and just pop it right in place. Do not force it, it should pop in quite easily. Same thing for the sill trim. It goes right on top of the weather strip, pops right in place. Continue running the wire towards the rear of the car. The rear door sill trim comes off just like in the front. You run the wire down that harness. You can run it up under the seat cushion, come into the trunk, flip the carpet up, pull this foam insert out, and you can reach your hand down below and fish yourself the wires and pull them through into the trunk area. Once everything's through, go ahead and tuck the foam down and lay the carpet right back over the top. Now we can go ahead and run this wire bundle over to the deck lid. Now we're gonna go ahead and start stripping down all the fabric in the trunk. In order to get the deck lid trim off, you can use a panel popper and a screwdriver to spin out these screw style push clips. So put a little tension behind the screw with the popper and then you take your impact or your screwdriver and just spin the plastic screw and they'll pop right out. Go ahead and proceed around the perimeter of the deck lid and if you do break a couple it is to be expected these are old and they do get quite brittle placements are sourced very easily from amazon autozone pet boys etc next we'll go ahead and remove the inner quarter panel trim we'll start by removing the rear cargo net and tossing that aside Then remove this built-in organizer, which is held in with one 13 millimeter bolt. Now go ahead and grab a panel popper to remove these two Christmas tree style clips that secure the entire assembly. Bolt removed, it lifts right out. Now we just have to remove the rear body panel trim, which lifts and pops right off by hand. Although you can utilize your panel popper pry tool here as well. Finally, you have access to pull the trim.
proceed with running the harness, I'm gonna run along that lower left-hand corner where the floor pan meets the inner quarter structure, up the strut tower, and over to the deck lid hinge. And I'm gonna utilize the factory harness clips to run the harness up to the inner deck lid, real meet up with the rear camera pigtail. Here I begin to plot my run and make sure I pull out enough slack to run from that inner quarter panel structure over to the deck lid hinge. I take into account the shape of the hinge, the range of motion, and where things may come into contact between the hinge and that inner quarter structure. And now that I see all my clearance, I'm gonna go ahead and run the RCA up and along the factory wire harness, securing them with zip ties until I get to the factory clips. To open the factory wire retainers, use a pick tool or a flathead screwdriver. Just simply stick it in the slot, give it a twist, and it'll open right up. You can see I have the RCA tucked behind that factory loom. Then I proceed running the RCA along the factory wire harness to this large open area on the back of the deck lid where I'll bundle up the slack, create a ground, and establish all my connection points between the RCA and the camera pigtail. At this point, I run out of clips and I use zip ties to secure it to the factory harness for the remainder of the run. Electrical tape would make a great alternative if you don't have zip ties. With it all secured, we can finally go ahead and plug the pigtail into the harness and bundle up our slack. Be mindful when you bundle up your slack as to not make it too big, so trim will still fit over it. It's best to spread that load out over as large of a length as possible. With the connection made here in the deck lid and everything bundled up, if the camera ever needs to be replaced, you will only have to remove one piece of trim going forward. It's always a great practice to install with a mindset for ease of serviceability in the case that something does go wrong. With the RCA ran up into the deck lid area, I'll go ahead and clean the inner quarter panel sheet metal with a 50-50 water alcohol solution. This will ensure adequate adhesion for the electrical tape securing the wire to the sheet metal. And believe it or not, taping is an OEM practice, whether it's electrical tape or the alternative foil tape. It's a great little trick to use in areas where you'll have low moisture, low heat, and no movement. With the wire taped in place, I will now check the range of motion on the hinge to ensure there will be no disruption of the wire.
Next, I'll remove the trim piece that I'm going to mount the camera in. It's held on with four 10 millimeter nuts and two plastic clips. With the nuts removed, grab a pliers, give the plastic clips a squeeze, and I've released the two remaining corners of the trim. Now you can go ahead and pop it out. With the trim out, I can go ahead and make clearance for the flush mount camera. I'm gonna use a pair of flush trim cutters to cut out some of the excess plastic and a Dremel to increase the size of the lock cylinder hole. Remember to only remove a little bit of material at a time because obviously you cannot add material back in once you've gone too far. You should always grab your camera assembly so you can mock it up while you're in process of grinding the piece to ensure proper fitment. This ring is the piece that we are going to fit into the trim. With the whole board out, now you can go ahead and pop in your retainer. Now we're ready for reinstallation. In order to pull this off, the lock cylinder will need to be deleted. You'll still have two ways to access the trunk, one via the remote and the other the lever by the driver's seat. The lock cylinder and trunk release are all one assembly, so we'll have to modify it to retain the mechanism. However, the key cylinder is now an obstruction, so we'll go ahead and shave that off to retain the mechanism and creating room for the camera. Always be sure to use the proper PPE when using a cutoff wheel. Now that we made that clearance, just prime it, paint it, and reinstall it back on the vehicle. With everything situated in the deck lid, now we can go ahead and start finalizing our bundle. Here you can see I'm cutting a green wire loop, which is the guidelines for the camera that are built in. I don't prefer to have guidelines on my builds, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Next, I'm going to create a grounding point for the camera. Be careful when you're drilling through these structures as the skin of the deck lid is right on the other side and you could dent it outwards. I'll be utilizing a threaded rivet for ease of serviceability. And please pardon the camera footage here, I was only able to shoot this once. If you've ever overused a self-tapping screw in sheet metal, you'll understand why I'm using this method instead. To finalize the connection, I'll crimp on a ring terminal. You're ready to go ahead and bolt it all up. Now with a little editing magic, let's go ahead and transition into a better picture. And here's the finished product for the wire harness. So we're zip tied all along the way. And um, camera goes up in here. Hard to see behind this lock cylinder. And what I did was I just spread this harness out along the factory one to kind of spread out the load, if you will. So that way it doesn't get all bulky under the trunk liner. So we're gonna go ahead, put the last couple fasteners on. Make sure everything's tightened up, but all the testing has been done. Everything works perfectly.
just like that it's all back together only three clips were harmed in the making of this camera install yeah we just gotta vacuum it out but yo it looks good and no one will ever know that i was up in that only indication the camera itself try panel popper Oh, nice. So what you do is, these guys have a little finger clip. So when it's pushed up in there, you can get your nail or a screwdriver on that. You pull that in. Hold on, my battery's getting low. You pull that in and it releases it and then it just swings down and out. The next thing to do is to drop your glove box for this one. You can just squeeze in on both sides. That allows that to swing down. You got a little screw here. Probably take that out. We could probably drop this thing all the way out. Right, let's try that. Yep. Oh, look. Whole thing comes out. All right. You know, and let's just. You know, a lot of times it's good practice to put the screw back in the hole you found it in so you don't lose it. I'm trying to adopt that mindset. So yeah, now that we're in here, it should literally be this, this guy right here. When the test lead is connected to the appropriate wire, when you put the vehicle in reverse, you'll see a voltage reading anywhere from about 12 volts to 14. It's pretty hard to see. I don't have a small enough tripod to get in, but we got a fuse tap here that's just gonna pinch around the wire. Crimp this end onto your lead wire. That'll plug into the back of the assembly, and that's how you tap in. With the splitter in place, now you can run a wire right up to the reverse trigger on the back of your radio. The whole car is now reassembled, so let's take a look at what we got. Works just like OEM, but only in a vehicle that was never equipped with such features. You can see the picture is crystal clear on this HD camera that I prefer to use on all my installs. 
The model shown here has since been discontinued, however the new model is at the same price but of a higher picture quality. I'll put a link for the camera, the current model of the radio, and any of the specialty tools that were utilized in the making of this video. This is just the beginning of this build. Stay tuned because there's a lot more to come. We out.